Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University, kind of classroom edition. Unfortunately, we now get to something evil, math. Now, it's really simple math, don't get scared. In order to figure out what's going on, you need to know how much you got, where it's going, stuff like that. All this comes to something called the mass balance equation, okay? This is the mass balance equation. The grade that the assay lab sends you times the weight of the sample equals the weight of gold in the sample. Very simple. There's one complication. This weight of sample and the grade have to use the same units of weight. If this is ounces per ton, then this has to be tons. So 50 pounds will be like 1 40th of a ton. Okay? <laughs> uh, we're using, uh, this is Ryan's 50 kilogram test sample for a reason. Remember I said I used 50 kilograms to make the math easier? This is why. I get results in parts per million from the lab. Now, parts per million is also grams per metric ton, grams per thousand kilograms. That's what a metric ton is. It's not 2,000 pounds. It's like 2,210 pounds, okay? Which also equals milligrams per kilogram. These all units are identical. They're just expressed differently, okay? So... The grade was in for the, the head sample for Ryan's uh, test there was 16.7 parts per million. I changed that to 16.7 milligrams per kilogram, then multiply it by 50 kilograms. Now, these kilograms drop out, leaving it 16.7 times 50, is 835 milligrams. A milligram is just a thousandth of a gram, so it's 0.835 grams. That's all there is to it. If this was in ounces per ton, 50 kilograms would be a 40th of a ton. Do the math. I don't know what it is. 5%? 0.05, I believe. Uh, I'll figure it out put it up here. But anyhow, Multiply that amount of a ton, because we're now looking at, oh geez, 110 pounds out of a ton, about a 20th. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Make sure your units match up. But anyhow, 1 20th would be 5% of a ton, roughly within a little bit. So if this was an ounces per ton, you'd multiply it by the decimal fraction of a ton that you had to deal with here and that would give you ounces okay because the units will cancel out if they're the same you can't multiply parts per million times pounds <laughs> it doesn't work very well okay although that would give you you know gold in pounds but who you know if you if you're dealing with gold in pounds you don't need me <laughs> you can afford someone much better. Anyhow, this is how it works. It's very simple. Grade times weight equals weight of gold. Just make sure that these numbers are the same so they cancel out. And then whatever's left is in this number. You know, this, this is in milligrams. This is in milligrams. So, that's the basic equation. That's how I use it to find the amount of gold in any particular sample. Now we will see how that applies to Ryan's particular uh, test here. So now we have a little more information up here. I ran it over my table. I wound up with 32.2 kilograms of tailings. The assay ran 5.13 parts per million, which gives me 165 milligrams of gold 
in the tailings. In terms of gold recovered, wow, it'd be nice to be able to spell, wouldn't it? Uh, how about that? Anyhow, in terms of gold recovered, we had 450 milligrams. Remember I said about a half an ounce, I mean about a half a gram? Well, doing some a little more detailed analysis, some other stuff, a, a better estimate is about 0.45 grams. Okay? Still some gold in the cons, don't know how much, but I'm guessing about that much. But it's a, a much more educated guess now. That winds up with 54%. Now, to those sharp-minded people out there who are always trying to correct my math, and thank you for that, you do catch me from time to time, 100% minus 20% is not 54%. By golly, something has disappeared here, and that's correct. Now, if we started with 50 kilograms before we crushed it and pulverized it, we could have easily lost that in dust under certain conditions, okay? However, I measured this, I weighed this after pulverization, so dust is not going to be a major loss. It's going to be almost insignificant. Also, most of this was fed wet over the table. In other words, it was in buckets, mixed with water, then put on the screen. That's not going to be uh, a significant uh, dust loss there. Now there is a loss that isn't here and that is the oversize from the screen. It was a relatively small amount, less than a pound, and uh, I panned it and didn't see any chunks of gold, but th it could have had a significant amount of gold there. Probably not. But there is something that I do know there is that is not here, and that's something called slimes. The tailings are settled out of the process stream after the extraction, and they are um, collected, dried, and weighed. But after that, it goes to the water recirculation tub, and some real fine material settles out there. In, in milling, the material that's too small to settle or to filter well is generally called slimes. Okay? So anyhow, you can take a look here. See, there's a significant amount of material that did not show up. So let's see how much that is. They're missing. My penmanship sucks too. Okay, we have 17.8 kilograms. of material. When you pulverize it, you can make a lot of slimes. It's not desirable. The amount of gold missing is 220 milligrams. And there's a little rounding here, so it may not be absolutely correct. If I make a major screw up, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll read you the video. I'll double check this before I compile it. Now, that amount of gold comes out to 26% of the gold up here has disappeared, presumably in the slimes. There may be some other stuff. That 17.8 is 36% of the total mass. And when you do the calculations, you wind up with 12.3, okay? Now, this is still less than that, okay? But that would tend to indicate to me we have a lot of really fine gold getting past the table. That's my assumption. The tailings should have your, most of your crystal lock gold, the, the stuff that you haven't pulverized it fine enough 
to get the gold out uh, broken loose. So this is what we have so far and this leads us to a bunch of questions. 54% is not really good, but considering we've got 26% missing, not really bad. Tailings only have 20% of the gold in it. If you look at these numbers, if you didn't do the whole mass balance equation, if you just did this, say, well, we went from 16.7 to 5.13, that means that you would estimate a 70% recovery if you didn't weigh it and do the mass balance equation. Okay? Now, if you weigh it and do the mass balance equation, you find out 20% of the gold is here, and you think, wow, that's an 80% recovery. Cool. However, when you actually weigh the gold, you get only about 54%. There's probably some more in the concentrates, but even if all the concentrates were gold, and they certainly can't be, it was still only 0.75 grams, or 750 milligrams, which is 100 milligrams less than that. So, clearly it disappeared somewhere, probably in the slimes. The next test, I'll add a little bit more complexity to it. First of all, this test, one reason I didn't do the slimes, it was A, preliminary, and B, I was doing a lot of other testing, and it takes a bit to tear out the um, recirculation tub from the table, clean everything up, and start all over again. That's what I'm going to do on the next test. I'll probably use a larger sample, 100 kilograms, 200 kilograms, something like that. Big sample. Um, again, there, you, you have less start and stop losses and things like that. It's just, again, bigger is better. Size matters. Um, I will take some of the tailings, hand pan it, and uh, send off some of the tailings from the hand panning and compare that with the raw tailings basically to ascertain if there's still any panable free gold there I should be able to extract that and give really depleted tailings and get a better idea how much free gold may still be there I don't think it's too much okay I think this gold here is mainly either crystal locked, you know, it's still not broken free, still not liberated, or so small that it's just floating around, I wouldn't be able to, to pan it reliably or see it in the pan. So, but what I saw in the tailings was very little. Certainly not uh, 0 0.513, what the hell is that? 0.15 ounces per ton. Oh yeah, I'd have seen that, okay? So it, it, it seems to me that it, that's either really fine gold that I can't pan, or it's still not liberated. I'll have to clean the whole table, the whole thing. When I'm done, I'll just have to take the time. It's going to be a day or so to let it all settle. Then slowly, carefully drain it. Let it dry a day or so. <laughs> scrape it out of the catch tub. Dry it. Weigh it and assay it. Then I can see where the gold is going to. If it's in the, the slimes and it's still free gold, there's a couple of possibilities there in terms of how to deal with it. Number one, just go ahead and rerun it. I mean this is 36 percent of what you started with. Um, rerunning that doesn't take nearly as long. Okay. You can run it at lower flow rates, just essentially run it more gently, okay? Now, the other thing is if it's still not liberated, we can try a little testing to see whether or not it's worthwhile. At 5.13, no, 0.15 for us, is that worth going after or is it better to just stockpile it for now and maybe leach it some other time, especially if you get an operation somewhere where you're actually leaching, then you just throw it in with the other stuff and get the gold then. But this is what we're looking at now. This was the first run. Um, we're testing both the table and the ore. The actual recovery 
of, you know, <laughs> uh, what would that be? 54% is not that great, but that's actually the pure gold, theoretically. We're also going to take these concentrates, and Ryan has a, a furnace. We may try just smelting them directly, uh, especially if we, you know, recover what gold we can that looks nice, nice clean gold, but then also smelt the rest, or we might just smelt it all. We'll just see what, depends a lot on Ryan. And uh, so verify what's going on here with the concentrates, verify what's going on with the tailings, verify what's going on with the slimes. We're losing gold, fair amount of it somewhere, but this doesn't look too bad. Okay, If we can get this down to a reasonable number, this will come up and we'll be in good shape. If it's in the concentrates, but you know, crystal locked or something in there and it's not very visible, that might come up pretty well too. We shall just see what we shall see. I'll let you know when we get it figured out, probably in about a month or two. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.